Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video five in our SOLIDWORKS API project tracking series. We've already handled quite a bit up to this point in the first four videos. The first one was really just a project overview, taking a look at the SOLIDWORKS API help file, and then we got into dealing with custom properties. Now we've already seen how we can handle getting our custom properties, we've seen how we can add custom properties, and we created some if else if statements to handle whether or not the return value of getting the custom properties is equal to one or two. So basically if the custom property is there or if it's not, and then we can go through and we can add those to the active document. We also want to get access to the path, the location of our file. We want to know where it's saved on the computer, on the network, whatever the case is. That'll give us access to the file name, the type of file, whether it's a part, assembly, or drawing file, and also give us the location of it. So very good information, very handy to have, and it's going to populate a cell in our Excel spreadsheet when we get to that side of things. So we need to make a few more declarations. Uh, we're going to have to get the path of our file. So that means that we're going to have to have a string for the path. So I'm going to declare a new value, dim file path as string. And I'm also going to declare a new value called null file path. And we're going to declare that as a string as well. Now, the reason I add this null file path as string is because there are cases such as part seven, where we've started a new part, we started doing a few things, and we ran the project tracker. But this file hasn't been saved. It, it's never been saved. It's still part seven. It's not part seven at the C drive anywhere. So when we run the project tracker, it's going to say, hey, this file isn't saved anywhere. What, you know, what do you want to do? And when we get into the Excel side of things, it's not going to be good for us to leave empty cells. We want to make sure that when we're putting this information into Excel, that it all stays in the same row and we don't have any empty spaces because then data starts to get mismatched. And when you're looking for empty rows, they're not going to be in the same place. And of course, there are different ways that you can handle this. But in general, we want to make sure that we hit every angle of this. We don't want to have a certain instance where this thing's going to fail. So we want to handle if there's a file path and we also want to handle if there's not so there's a string for file path and there's a string for null file path or we can say no file path all right so now that we have these values we want to access the file path i'm going to actually put this above my get five variables here before i get the custom properties i want to look for that file path first so what I need to do is use my file path string that I declared and set that equal to something. Now this is going to be SW model, which is our current active document. And it's going to simply be SW model dot start typing in get path name. And once we get the path name, we just open and close brackets parentheses. All right. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw a little breakpoint here in my code. I'm going to save it and I want to play it. So as I play this, this get path name, you'll notice that file path name is an empty string because I don't have a file path. The, the, that file hasn't been saved yet. So as I run through it, that's very important to note that file path is basically an empty string. It's just two quotations right next to each other. So as I run through the rest of the program, everything works fine. If I go to this file, which even though it currently hasn't been saved since there were some changes, it does have a file path. You'll notice that when I hold my cursor over it, it says its location on my S drive. So that means if I run the program, it should give me that value. So if I hold this over my file path string, it's populated with the file path, S drive, Solidbox, blah, 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 all this information here. So that means that everything's working. The file that didn't have a file path that wasn't saved yet, came up with an empty string, but the one that was saved had this value here. All right, so let's go ahead and run through the rest of the program. I'll take my stop out, but now we need to figure out how to handle whether or not there's a file path here. So we're going to run another if statement. We're going to say if file path equals two empty quotation marks, so basically an empty string. We could also type the word empty, but I'm going to go ahead and use the exact same nomenclature that we saw when we held our cursor over there. Then we're going to say file path is equal to no file path. And then we're going to end that if statement. 
But at this point in time, we don't have no file path declared as anything. So I'm gonna come back up after my set custom properties and I'm gonna say that no file path is equal to, and I'm just gonna say unsaved document. So now I've declared no file path and I've made it equal to the string unsaved document. So this means that as it looks for the path name, if it doesn't exist, then it's gonna set my file path equal to unsaved document. Now I could also simply type in unsaved document here, and I'll go ahead and I'll do that. I'll just say unsaved, and I'll leave off the no file path string. Now the reason I like to use the string is because it might be easy later if we wanna give the user an option to manually enter a file path or navigate to a file path or, or whatever the case might be. So it's nice to have this empty string here, which we've declared at the top. It's nice to have that there if we want to allow the user to interact and give some user input or, or navigate to a location. There is a browse functionality that we could use to browse to a location on your computer, on the network, wherever the case might be. But in this case, we just want to basically populate a text box to tell the user that it is unsaved. They can always go back and save it, rerun the tracker, or whatever the case might be. But let's see if this is actually working. Let's go ahead and let's just put a break in there, go back to SOLIDWORKS, go back to part seven, which is currently unsaved. So if we run our code, it comes down to the end if. So that means that it actually ran through our if statement. You'll notice that file path is set to unsaved. Now, another thing that we can do here, rather than put this break in, let's go ahead and do another MSG box. And I want this to be equal to file path. So that way, regardless of which method it has to go through, we're gonna prompt the user, we're gonna tell them what the file path is. So that means if the file is saved, if it gets the value here and it populates it, then it'll just pop down here and it'll put it in that message box. If this is empty and it goes through this if statement, it'll show unsaved here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's run it one more time. It's showing unsaved. If we go back to the other SOLIDWORKS part that has actually been saved, go back to our code and rerun it, it gives us the location of that. Now let's also, instead of manually entering a text here, let's go ahead and say no file path, which as you note, will say unsaved document rather than just unsaved. So as we run through, works for that case, go back to our unsaved document, run the code and it says unsaved document. So now we know everything is working properly. We don't need that message box there anymore. We have the code in place that will allow us to handle getting the file path. And if the file path doesn't exist, if it's unsaved, at some point in time, we can tell the user that it has an unsaved document. So again, pretty straightforward, especially compared to dealing with the custom properties, getting them and adding them, and all the information that went along with that. The file path for our purposes is pretty straightforward. We're not saving the document for them. Now we could very easily save the document for them, but we don't want to interact with the file. We wanna get information from it. We don't really want to save it. We don't wanna rebuild it because you guys know as you're working with these documents, you might be making changes. You might decide not to save it. You might end up going down a path that you don't like and having to close it and reopen it and then run it again. So if that's the case, you don't wanna save it. You don't want to automatically have this macro save it either. Of course, we could add an extra button that says save document now, and they could browse to a location and do all that. A little bit out of the scope of what we're doing here. We want to keep it as simple as possible and as straightforward as possible for what we're doing. If you guys have any questions on what you saw here dealing with the model path and the if statement dealing with the empty string, please shoot us a line, solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.